Is. Recording well, we started are, yeah. and we're live. Uh -huh. oh, okay. You're listening to the Substation Gaming Podcast. I'm Black Chestnut. With me, I have Lucos. Hello. And Ricola. Hi. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be talking about all the games that came out this year and also the upcoming releases. Uh, mostly just because there's been so many great games that have come out this year that we that haven't even had a chance to talk about just because you there's know, just been so much yeah there's been so much and they kind of passed us by and so now we're catching up on them basically this is a catch-up stream yep all right and we're starting off with uh mario 3d world and bowser's fury let's yeah. jump right into it guys well i've played this a bit um, more so I played the original 3D World more than I played Bowser 3D, Fury. actually. But did I ever you get this? I bought it. I just haven't yeah. played it yet because same, I wanted to here. play it together. <laughs> yeah, same yeah. here. I just been... I, I, yeah, I remember I bought it simply for the pins, the pin set. <laughs> and I got that pin set, so it was totally <laughs> worth it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I think you showed me. It was pretty nice. But, um, yeah, it's another Mario game. Yeah. It should be, that... should be good, you know? Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah, I, I didn't like 3D World too much when it was on Wii U. Like, I think I was just, like, kind of disappointed because I wanted something, like, more open like Odyssey was. But now that we have Odyssey, uh, not like 3D World's like, oh, that was good. <laughs> like, a, like, it's its own thing. So... So is Bowser's Fury like it's an, effectively an expansion? a different game? Yeah, but it's built sort off of an the engine thing. and the mechanics and stuff. Okay, but it's, it's sort of just like its own game. Yeah, got it. it. It's just like an open world where you find what was it? I can't even remember what the the cat shines. Cat shines. <laughs> they were okay. like the shines from. Um, sun sign, okay. but they're cats. Like cats. Yeah, everything yeah. is cats. Just kind of an open world thing where you just go find them. And then Bowser occasionally comes by and beats the crap out of you. You know what's funny? It took me forever to realize that the shines in Mario Sunshine were supposed to be suns. I you never realized that. Just... The... I just thought that they were different shaped stars. Because, you know, a <laughs> sun, the sun is a star, you know. I, I guess. Yeah, but I just thought they were astrological, astrological bodies. bodies. Yeah. yeah, stars, <laughs> suns, and moons. Yeah, but suns and stars are the same thing. <laughs> yeah, because the That's star. The problem no, a sun is a star. Yeah, Joe. Uh, yeah, exactly. Black Chestnut's correct. Well, yeah, but yeah. it's the specific. It's it's a, it's the specific sun. I guess. <laughs> Not all stars have planets. That's true. I think so. Some I'm stars are very actually things. actually. <laughs> I'm not Neil deGrasse Tyson. I think astrology. I think actually, if stars don't have planets around them, they have another star. Like there's two yeah, stars. Yeah, stars can stars can revolve around stars. It's possible. Yeah. But uh, let's get out of astrology back to 3D Mario. Yeah. Mario uh, 3D. Yeah. 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 But yeah, we might play this sometime. Yes. <laughs> I want to. We'll get around to it. 3D World's really fun in multiplayer. A lot yeah, more fun than was to see a 3D World things. Let's Play sometime in the future on the channel. Oh, for sometime. sure. That would yeah. be definitely a good idea. 3D so, World multiplayer plays a, has 3D World probably is the best Mario multiplayer. For right. sure, definitely. <laughs> so obviously, you play through 3D World and then you unlock Bowser's Fury like after no, 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 they stop again. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. It comes with the game when you find it Switch. It's like a separate Got it. Thing from yeah. You know? It's not like a thing you unlock. You can pick it from the menu. You can start and do Bowser's Fury first. And oh, then yeah. Got it. They're two separate games. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And one thing of the note of is with this port specifically, the Switch version, uh, they made all the characters move faster. Yes, it is noticeable. Yeah. So Toad is now. Way fast. Pass. More ridiculous. Yeah, Toad blasts through levels. Yo, Toad is like on steroids. 
Yeah. But he still can't jump. And he's not <laughs> swole, because usually when you take steroids, you become swole. He's the fast. Yeah. That's why he's blue. He's like Sonic. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Wait, so, yeah. but, but wait, why is there a toad dressed in a cat, a blue cat costume? Oh, that's just one of the power-ups. Yeah, it's a cat oh. power-up. Oh, you become a cat? Oh, okay. Have you not played this game before? I know we've played this game together uh, before. I, I know we played this on the Wii, you know, like, eight years ago. Possibly, and I just am having a brain fart. We played this it's together. We, we definitely have, I just didn't remember a minute ago. Yeah, everything's cat themed, especially in Bowser's Theory. Like Bowser's Theory is insane. The birds are cat themed. It's bizarre. Cat birds. What do the cat birds eat? They eat oh, other cause birds. Because like, cat, cats eat birds, but what do cat birds eat? They eat other birds uh, as well. Cat no, seed? I guess they eat the catfish. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and then the catfish eat the cat birds. They're... And then the cat what? cats eat the catfish and the cat birds. Right. It's a whole ecosystem. Yeah, it's the yeah. circle of life. This is how life works. Just are more cats. Survival of the fittest. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's not really much. To to, yeah, there's not much to say of it since we haven't played it, but. Um... Yeah, maybe yeah I'll play for like an hour or so of Buzzer's Fury. I didn't play too much. Was it how, good? Yeah, how do you like it so yeah, far? Yeah, it was solid. Uh, the flow, like, just like the open world, like, just, you know, like, you flow from shine to shine really well. I don't know yeah. if I like, I, I don't think it's, like, as tightly designed to say, like, Odyssey, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How is the map design, like? Well, like, yeah, like I said, well, Bowser's Fury is, um, is completely open world, yeah. sort of. Okay, got it. You just unlock Run more islands with enough like. shines, they just kind of show up. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. it, it is mildly annoying, like, every, like, few minutes or so, Bowser wakes up, shoots fire at you, and then, like, goes back to sleep. That's, that, that's kind of annoying sometimes, I'll be honest. I'm not a huge fan of that mechanic. It's like, oh, like, there's certain boxes that like only bowser can break so you gotta like wait for him to wake up and yeah, stuff like that will kind of annoying from what i remember i know but we gotta you gotta take advantage of bowser man you gotta use him well it's a cool mechanic but the fact i, I don't know it's like, a weird mechanic it's, beca it's something like you don't really have a lot of control over so having like stuff like behind it's annoying so sometimes. you you can't like necessarily like for instance punch his foot or something and wake him up because you have to wait. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, you have to wait for him to wake up. Is there like, is it just RNG? Like, could you just be waiting for no, hours? No, it's a few minutes. It, no, it's a few minutes. It's, it's on, on a timer. Ten minutes or so. I don't know. It's, it's on a timer. Oh, I was going to say. Like, there's specific shines that are locked behind blocks that only Bowser can break. So you have to wait for him to wake up to break the blocks for you. So you can right. get the shines. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I got that. And there's other times where I'm having fun doing, like, some challenge or something, and then Bowser wakes up and starts blasting me. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, do you guys want to move on to the next game? Um, yeah, that seems like it for me. Um, what do we got next? Yeah. Bravely Default 2. All right. So Black Chestnut, basically, take the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, the reason why I still haven't gotten to Bowser's Fury slash Mario 3D World, besides the fact that I want to play 3D World with you guys, is because in the same month, uh, Bravely Default 2 came out, and then I put out like 120 hours into that and didn't look back. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, you... I didn't really have time to play Mario. <laughs> Yeah, you grinded yeah. it. I mean, it, it, yeah. from what I hear from you, it, it sounds like the best game that came out this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it pretty much is. Um, if, if you ever, if you watched our first um, podcast, you'd know um, that I played this when it came out, and I said it was my game of the year at that time. Keep in mind that was back in like March, 
Yeah, this, that was that was I think our actual very um, first stream or second. It was stream. the it was the first one. Yeah, I remember. Wow. Um. And yeah, so that was like still really early in the year. A lot of games have come out since then. A lot of really really good games have come out since then. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Bravely Default Two is still on top of the list. It, it was like yeah. that good. And but, honestly, wow. it's like in my top ten of all time. It's yeah, definitely it's, it's definitely got some competition since March though. Yeah. That we're gonna talk about later on this stream, but But honestly I don't even think any of the other ones even really came close. Uh-huh. Like no experience this year has impacted me uh, as much as, as, much as default, two, d- default two did. It's, it was so fucking good. Like it was really good. Like, I really want to emphasize, this is, like, the best JRPG I've ever played. I don't think I've ever played a game that's this, like, flawless. Like, I don't yeah. feel like there's a single thing that's bad about it. The it's only it's problem I had with the game is that the map was kind of booty and could have been better. And that and that's it. Yeah. I'm trying to think what the problems uh, with the other The biggest problem with this things. game is that I wish it had a better mini-map. You know, it's not a big issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely, games like that, that's supposed to have a mini-map, I feel like a lot of the times, it, they either can, they either screw it up, or it's, it's really good. Like, I never... Like, like, honestly, my biggest problem isn't even, like, the overworld mini-map, it's just the fact that there's no mini-map in dungeons. Oh, got you, got you. It's kind of annoying in, like, mazy dungeons, yeah. Yeah. I'm you know, actually fine with, like, no mini-map in, like, the overworld, because usually the overworlds are pretty straight. And honestly, my only problem with that is that the dungeons, um, at, like, each one looks different, but every room uh, looks similar a lot. Like, some dungeons have very similar-looking rooms where all the walls look identical. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like, well, every dungeon, you uh, know, visually looks very distinct from one another, but while you're actually inside said dungeon, it can potentially be easy to get lost in a few of the rooms. Right, which makes sense. Yeah, that's or just, like, miss treasure chests and stuff like that. Also, there was way too many monsters and boxes in this game. I feel like every other chest had a random encounter inside it. <laughs> you know, honestly, the only game for me that's actually had a really good in like in dungeon minimap was uh, Diablo three. I really liked. It was like a... I don't think that's true. I probably really played Diablo one. Diablo ones, it's just overlaid over your screen. Yeah, that's that's. I think it's the same thing, but they did something else to it. But. It's just such a simple concept, and it but it it just allows yeah. you to really visualize where you're at in the dungeon. You ever play a Metroid Odyssey game? Those have the goofiest mini maps because they make you draw them. They yeah, well, that's mini- the whole point because it's a dungeon crawler. <laughs> yeah, it's just really it's a really funny mechanic. Yeah, not honestly, I think that's a great mechanic for a dungeon crawler. Yeah, like, oh, it is. Yeah, it, it, it's fun. It is fun. I play Persona Q when it's fun in there because that's you know just Metroid Odyssey game. Oh but... yeah. Um, but I was thinking of uh, the other Bravely. Def- the other Bravely games kind of had a few flaws, and I'm wondering how much to fix them. First, padding. Like, one, and to a lesser extent, second, it just had a ton of padding. Like, there's no padding in this that? game. Okay, there's, like, there's functionally none. There's, like, one segment in the game where you have to go back to the old towns, but, like, that's full of new dungeons and stuff. Okay, that's fine, then, yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, you, like, one of the town, like, right, town revisits isn't great, but that's just because they didn't give put anything new in there but it's also like pretty straightforward you just talk to some npcs and then you fight a boss okay that's yeah the other two have like i want to say dungeons attached to them and a bit more going on right and And uh other problem i think i think second also kind of went pretty far as fixing this but one had a lot of like jobs that just kind of ended up feeling useless (laughs) yeah I don't really feel that at all with Bravely Default 2. I feel like most of the jobs are relatively balanced and that they're all pretty good. Okay. Like, every single job feels broken. You know? <laughs> That's a good thing, actually. It's fun to break, like, turquoise games. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if they're broken, if they're all broken, then they all must be balanced, then. <laughs> also, I feel like this one, by far, has the best, like, end game content out of the three. Bravely Default games, because like, in one there was the looping stuff, which was mostly there so you could refight old bosses harder 
you know? Yeah. But that was pretty annoying when you when you were just trying to do the main story and stuff. And this right. one, uh-huh. there's none of that shit. But you have these really tough, like, boss refights. Right. Where if you actually beat them, you unlock the final, like, three levels for a job. Oh, that's cool. And you're, like, new that's abilities for a job. And they also will potentially drop um, the job's, like, main weapon. Which will give you oh, all yeah. of... Which is, like, not only has, like, insanely good stats and is, like, the objectively the best weapon to use for every job, but will also give you every single passive ability that job has. That's really cool. For it's free. actually a, yeah. that's a fun encouragement to refight stuff. So. And you can just, like, do those. And plus, they, like, it's not, like, a one-and-done thing. You can keep refighting them in order to grind out the items if they don't drop on the first time. Which yeah. means you can keep refighting them um you know because like just because you beat it once doesn't mean it's still not hard you know yeah like, i only beat a couple of them like i want to say because the the harder ones get like really hard <laughs> like the pictomancer the arcanist and the berserker job like that fight oh my god because that's the thing you don't fight them again but harder you fight four of them all at once and they're all way harder oh yeah yeah, yeah it's like it's the, the easiest feel. one. You're fighting the thief, the the like beast master, the gambler, and the bard all at once. So it feels effectively like a mini um, PvP almost sort of. Fight. Yeah, yeah, like a lot of Gravity Default ones and game stuff was sort of like that. Mm-hmm. It just I, I don't think Gravity Default one gave you much encouragement to actually do those though. <laughs> no. Aside from the challenge. Yeah, they, they were fun to do. And I did them for barely default one, but like I think they were yeah, kind of way better in two because especially since you can refight them in two. Yeah. In one, it's a one and done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I am sorry. I don't have much to say because I have not played either of these games, but it's fine. I definitely I played a bit of the demo, and the Scottish guy named like Elvis or something was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> what was his name? It's, it is Elvis. <laughs> yeah amazing oh, the game's so good definitely really gonna good. get around to playing it when i have more time because it looks really good and when i got multiple people and multiple sources telling me that this game is really really good you know i need to play it <laughs> but, yeah. yeah it's super comfy like honestly the plot of one was kind of like flimsy at points just because it's, it's like it's pretty generic it's generic it's like, and on top of that there's lots of like dumb plot holes where it's just like hey if these characters just stopped for five seconds to actually talk to each other then the entire plot would be avoided right yeah you know and, and two there's never a moment like that like every single yeah. npc and every single boss feels great like i loved every single character in this game I, there wasn't like a single one that like stood out to me as like unlikable. There was one yeah. that stood out to me as like disappointing, and that's only because they were super underdeveloped for how much hype they were given beforehand. Which yeah 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 that's the I would say that would be like the shadow boss, the one with the shadow job. Okay. She was just kind of like nothing. Right. <laughs> like like her her whole like segment is like the the least fleshed out bit of the entire game that's the part Uh, where you go back to one of the towns and all you do is talk to npcs okay yeah that's like it feels like there should be more here and there just isn't (laughs) but But, uh overall uh, i absolutely loved it and it was pretty much my favorite jrpg of all time yeah that's impressive (laughs) yeah that means you have so much confidence that there's gonna be no other game no other jrpg that comes out in the future ever (laughs) yeah and this one takes the cake Uh no question i mean unless we get a bravely second two and it's a sequel to this game i mean anything's possible yeah. Yeah, what are they gonna name the next one? Are they gonna name it Bravely Default Three or Bravely Second Two? Yeah. <laughs> or they could name it Bravely Default Two Two. Like, <laughs> like, like, like Final Fantasy Ten Yeah. 
<laughs> Which it effectively I mean, would just it, be it, for. The ending, it feels like it's setting up, like, another story with these characters. Especially since you don't even get to explore, like, the entire world in this game. You just explore one continent. Yeah. Unless it's okay. supposed to be, like, a Pangea. There's just one supercontinent and everything else is just some small islands. Yeah. But hmm. it seems like that's not the case because, like, one of your main party members is specifically comes from a distant land and is, like, a sailor. Okay. Okay. Although I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be a pirate. Huh. Because, like, he'll say, like, R and stuff at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I love characters like that <laughs> in the game. He's a pirate. Yeah. There's no pirate job in this game, so... Oh, that's I'm tough. going to assume that he's the pirate. Yeah. I like the pirate job. <laughs> I mean, like, the pirate's job's abilities are kind of, like, chopped up and then given to a few different jobs, I want to say. Okay. Like, well, actually, there's a job in this game called the Vanguard, and he's effectively the pirate and the Viking from 3 mashed to, into a single job. Okay. Because yeah. he's a tanky offensive unit that has, like, obscenely high defense and great... Like, he has really, really good defense and good offense as well. So and he's a raid boss. Def- yeah, his, well, his main defensive unit is he provokes enemies. He forces them to attack him instead. Because the other, like, tank job in the game is the shield master, and he jumps in front of teammates to block damage. Oh my goodness! Yeah. He reminds me of another character from a game. Yeah. Which game? You know. There's lots of Oh, yeah, like League that. of Legends? Gross. Yeah. Prom I mean, is here! Of, <laughs> there's lots of characters like that in lots of different games. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I'm addicted to League, so that was the first thing that popped in my head, so... <laughs> Brain rot. Pretty much. <laughs> but... But, yeah. So he's effectively a, a raid boss with a taunt. Sure. Yeah, in a sense. Well, no, he's the guy you bring to the raid boss. He's yes. <laughs> he's so... the tank on the raid boss. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, I if I could say like one thing, I'd say there's probably like too many DPS units and not enough. Well, actually, no. There's guys like there's, there's like two tank units. There's two heal units. There's like two different support units. But then the rest are all like DPS. And how many is that? DPS is actually, no, there's like out. three heal units because I, I forgot about the the salve maker dps is gonna be where you're gonna have the most variety no matter what that's true and i guess there's still you're gonna the have to have all your mages anything. you gotta have all your like punchy guy yeah, yeah you got the mages the brawlers but no, overall the, the jobs are like great in this game yeah cool. like i feel like it somehow managed to cover like all the bases and they all felt really good that's good. That's good. <laughs> what, what more could you ask from a game besides hitting on yeah. every mark that the game needs to hit? This isn't. This game isn't gonna win any awards at the Game Awards this year, but it like totally should win all of them. <laughs> <laughs> should at least win best soundtrack. If you were, if you were a if judge, it doesn't win best I don't know. This soundtrack. year probably has some cap- the soundtrack. There's some pretty hard going music. I don't know. What I know is that like. Ratchet and Clank is gonna get nominated for best soundtrack over this game, and it's gonna be like annoying. Like I bet you, Bravely Default Two isn't gonna even gonna be nominated for best soundtrack. Mm. And that's yeah. just like appalling. Yeah. You know how good the music in this game is. It's did they get uh, Link to Rising back or whatever? They did. Cause... They oh, got the... hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, they got the Bravely <laughs> Default One composer back. Okay, hell yeah. Cause um. All the vo- the half of the music in like Brutal Default One was done by the people that did the Attack and Titan opening. Yeah. <laughs> Which shows it's excellent. <laughs> That's the Attack on Titan opening, right? Yeah. 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 The first one. It's catchy. And they did music in Brutal Default One. They did um the boss theme and all the character themes. Well, they definitely know what they're doing they did when the it comes. Whole soundtrack. Oh, did they do the entire soundtrack? I was under the impression they did. Okay, I thought there was other songs that some other composers did. I wasn't sure. I mean, they might have, but uh, I thought they did, like, 
the majority of the oh. soundtrack. And they, I don't think they did any music for second, which was uh, disappointing. No, or but they reused a lot of tracks from one. Yeah, they did. Like, people complain, it's like, oh, the new Asterisk boss theme in Bravely Second's not good. Well, it's like, that only plays for, like, eight bosses in the entire game. Yeah. It's like, half of the bosses in Bravely Second were just the ones from the first game, and they reused that person's name <laughs> is for their fights. <laughs> Second's a weird game. Second... <sighs> I get why. Um, I, I, I still think I why it's not is, is bad. Too. Uh, it's good. I, I still it's think Bravely Default. Yeah, I think it was think Bravely Second. I think second in general, just is kind of a weird game. <laughs> I don't think it's that way. I can understand what people get upset about it. I don't know, but like the real reason why Bravely Default Two is like the best is because unlike the first two, they didn't censor it at all. <laughs> what did they censor in the one? They got. They like made the bikini outfit more covering, and the vampire yeah. outfit, it's its not just belts covering you, which is they, really They, they censored a lot. Like, they, they, okay. they censored a lot in both the first and the second game. And they opted for the characters' ages, which I don't care about. It doesn't affect anything. That doesn't... <laughs> yeah, that's not, like... That's that's just dialogue. Really. I don't even think it's dialogue. They never state their ages in-game. Yeah, I think it's probably just like out of like game like manual stuff. Yeah, that's literally just manual shit because they not once did they ever say their ages in game. Yeah, I mean, why would they? Exactly. Yeah. Um. But yeah, anything else we want to say? I have too mm. many other JRPGs I want to get through before I get to this. Sadly. <laughs> Yeah. As good as this is, I want to get through like SMT three and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, we'll get to this eventually. I played Bravely Default one pretty far after it came out, probably like a year or two after, and I still enjoyed it a ton. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to getting to this eventually. <laughs> so, uh, do you guys hear that clicking? Yeah. Who's doing it? Stop it. Stop the clicking. I didn't hear the click. Wait, it's not it's not Ricola? I thought it was. Re I was under the impression that it was. Because I was hearing that Weird. and I wanted to like <laughs> I I hear it in my headset. And I know it's I not me because it I'm not moving. <laughs> no, I heard the clicking too, and it's definitely not me. Ricola. What are you doing? Um, not much. Mysterious. Anyways, uh, do we got anything else we want to say on Bravely Default 2? Uh, really? Um, I don't have much to say at all, really. How about you, Black Chestnut? I mean, you've had the most to say. Anything else? Uh, I think I'm good. <laughs> all right. Is it going We're... to be I could talk about this game all day, but I don't want to. Yeah, we don't have Yeah, we got other games to get to. All right, what do we got next, guys? <laughs> Uh, Ender uh, Lilies. I have. You're also the only one who's played this here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got the first ending. The How many endings are there? I don't know. You know. At yeah. least two. Okay. <laughs> there might be more, but I know there's at least two. I got ending okay. A. Which, okay. which okay. like, uh, Sekiro, where you get like. The bad ending, but there's still like way more game after it. <laughs> so it's or like is it that. like Near Automata, where it's a completely different game after you get a different ending? Yeah. <laughs> well, unlike Sekiro, it doesn't start you in New Game Plus. It just starts you back bef when your last save file before you reach the okay. ending, and then it's just like go do other stuff. I'm like okay, because it's a Metroidvania, and it's just like there's 20 areas you could have been at and you haven't been there yet. Go do them. Oh, it always annoys me with Metroidvanias when they have like the one extra area. Yeah. At least let me keep the save file right before the end, then. So because <laughs> I don't yeah. want to replay entire Metroidvania. So what's this? What's this game about? Like, if you just uh, like, what's okay, the what's to, the premise? How to explain this? You're little girl, and you have JoJo stands, <laughs> and everyone in the world has died due to like nest to like a plague called the blight that turns people into like. Zombies, I guess. Oh my god, it's Dark Souls. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's Dark Souls, but you are a little girl with <laughs> JoJo stands. So instead Fuck. of and having a build with like a sword and shield, you just have 
personas. Go so, rules. Effectively, yes. yes. So, so how it works is you kill bosses, and then every time you kill a boss, you collect their soul, and you can then use their attack. Okay. So it's it's a Metroidvania where every single boss will unlock get unlock a new ability for you, and then you can use their ability to progress further in the world. Oh, that's fun! Actually, they actually do like add progression of stuff. Yeah. It's not just here's a bunch of unlockable like weapons. Yeah. Technically, it's actually okay. Cool. Yeah. So, like, for example, um, and, and and like all the primary bosses will always have give you like two abilities: one passive ability and then one active ability, which you can equip. Um, but the thing with the equipped active abilities is that you'll get like a lot of them, and that but you can only have like six at any given time, because it's like it's it's tied to their face buttons where you got like, you know, circle, triangle, square, you know, on like a PlayStation controller, with like X being jump, and right. then you can switch be switch between the two loadouts of okay. the three. So you can equip six abilities, but you'll get like a lot of them. You can only equip, like, six of them. So then you have to make choices of, it's like, do I want this ability? Or do I want this ability? You know? Oh, so the abilities almost kind of turn into perks? Almost. They're your attacks. Yeah. They're all they're all different attacks, but you can only have so many attacks. So that's your build. That's your build in this game. Instead of having weapons, sort of. you have... It's not an RPG, but you do level up. But, you know, you level up like you level up in Castlevania. Okay, okay. I got oh, you. Oh, vaguely numbers. Yeah. <laughs> How much is this game? I mean, I see you playing it all the time on Steam. How much is this game? Um, let me look it up. Cause I bought it like right when it left early access when it's full launch. And how much did you get it for that? Forty or sixty? It's twenty five dollars. Oh, cool, sweet. I'm gonna pick this up then. Yeah, yeah, it's an indie game. Um. Well, yeah. It's cool. But, like I was saying before, it's like every um, boss gives you an active and a passive ability. So, like, for example, you kill, like, a witch boss fight, and now you can swim underwater. You right. kill a knight. Wait, wait, where's with the, the correlation there? Witch to swimming underwater? Where's the correlation? Magic bubble. Well, okay. also, witches did get, uh, like, drowned. In oh, okay, yeah, you're right. I don't think there's right. any real correlation between that, but yeah. I mean, we're, we're, I was just thinking of everything. I was, yeah. yeah. It's a it's a vague enough connection. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not what they were going for, but... <laughs> it's yeah. there. Water. It's got water. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> you, you beat the bosses and you get abilities from them, but there's boss versions of every single regular enemy. And mm -hmm. killing the boss version of the regular enemy will give you the regular enemy's ability as well. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of neat. So, kind of Aria of Sorrow's gimmick, but more fleshed yes. out. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very similar to, like, the soul stealing from the Castlevania games and, like, uh, Bloodstain. Bloodstain. Yeah. But, um... Like, there's less ones, but they're more unique. Yeah. You know. Got it. Yeah, That's I'm nice. definitely gonna definitely gonna check this out. I might even watch some people play it after the stream tonight. It's good. <laughs> but all right. Uh, anything else you want to say? Um, I could probably talk more about it, but I don't really have anything off the top of my head yeah we got we got a good list of stuff to talk about tonight so that's it's also something to look forward to yeah but ender lilies is, is really good and it's going somewhere in my top 10 games this year so sweet <laughs> all right let's move on uh the final fantasy pixels remasters uh, the first yeah. three have come out. So, one, two, three, yes. <laughs> yes. Make sure they didn't release them in like a weird order, like five, four, six, or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've heard these are pretty solid, aside from having an ugly font. <laughs> yeah, I kind of heard that too. I'm uh, probably going to pick up Final Fantasy 3. 
because uh, I love Final Fantasy three. It's my favorite Final Fantasy. I, I've heard a few people like even say that um, this is like going to be like their preferred version over like the DS one because I know the DS one actually does have a decent amount of changes from the original. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna let's go into that because um, I know what the changes are and I understand okay. where people's like gripes from it come from. I personally mm-hmm. don't mind them that much, but that's just kind of me. The name, yeah. like, the biggest, like, gameplay change um, is the limit of enemies you can fight on a single time. In okay. the DS remake of 3, you're limited to only three enemies because they couldn't have so many models on the DS at once, you know? Right. Uh, um, uh. I don't mind it that much just because, like, uh, it makes that one dungeon where the enemies split into, like, two every time you hit them way less annoying <laughs> yeah um and they increase I, experience enemies if you though yeah they increase the enemy's health and the experience dropped and stuff okay it does yeah, make so not like, um oh. aoe magic less useful though but you know okay. now, for me personally it just kind of is like well, now it's less annoying to have to... Because fu- it's always, like, annoying in, like, early Final Fantasy games where it's, like, you'll get into a random counter and there's 10 or 12 enemies and then it's just, like, they're all weak enemies. They all die in, like, one hit. But, but you now take I have all those to turns. have... Yeah, now I have to hit them all, you know? Right. Or it's, like, or use, like, an AoE magic spell to kill them all in one hit. But it's, like, I'll have to use one of my better tier spells and with the spell slot system in one and three that can get annoying but you know it's it's i I don't really think it's a big change either way like i'm cool with both (laughs) you know right um and the other big change from 3ds is it has job sickness effectively so how, how the mechanic works is every time you switch jobs um, the character you switch the job from will have stat decreases for, like, a couple battles. Okay. And That's interesting. And I get where people are annoyed by this. I never really found it super annoying just because it's like, well, if you're... One, you're not supposed to be switching jobs that much anyway. And two, if you're Pretty switching jobs... Switch. It doesn't. You, okay. It wants you to switch only, like when you like really really need to but for the most part you you want to just pick a job set and like stick to it okay but like the the job sickness isn't that annoying because like when you switch jobs anyway you're gonna want to like grind up a couple battles to get their job level up anyway you know so which makes sense yeah it's like what are you gonna switch your character right before a boss battle and like have them be job yeah. level one going into a tough boss. Like, no, why would you do that? Yeah, that that yeah, that would be kind of yeah. That would be like suicide. The, the Pixel remasters get rid of that, and I'm pretty sure there was a different mechanic uh-huh. in the NES original that was even more annoying than the job sickness <laughs> in the DS remake. I don't remember what it is exactly. I just remember people saying that there is one. So you okay. know. Yeah, this could arguably be the best version of 3, but I only say arguably because it really depends on how you feel about the DS remake. And personally, I like the DS remake, but I like that mostly because of the visuals. I just really like the 3D models. I think they look really nice. Yeah, well, yeah. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, if you like something about the game, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I'm probably going to pick up the Pixel Remaster of 3 at least. But funnily enough... Untrack for that. <laughs> speaking of like all the Pixel Remasters, namely of 1 and a little bit of 2, uh, yeah. earlier in the year, Sony announced that the PS Vita and PS3 stores would be closing. They quickly backtracked mm-hmm. on that like a few weeks later. Right. But not before I decided to buy Final Fantasy 1 and five on my ps vita right okay which are the ps1 ports of like the final fantasy one and two we release on ps1 along with okay. um the final fantasy 5 port the ps1 is what the version i got 
Okay. Which is not the best version of Final Fantasy V. Right. And yeah. another annoying factor, which I didn't know before I bought it, is that when you buy them on your Vita, the screen resolution is shrunk. Oh. Okay. For some reason, even though what it's on a tiny Vita screen, it zooms it down even more. So it only takes up like half of the screen. That's strange. <laughs> so it's like uh, super uh, tiny. Well, the games are made for 4 3, aren't they? Tiny screen. The, yeah. The games are 4 3, right? It's really okay. shrunk down. Because it's like a widescreen <laughs> view in tiny. It's it's dumb. It's annoying. Yeah, and I played yeah. through Final Fantasy 1 this year on that. I had a lot of How'd fun. How'd that go? It was good. <laughs> and then I started 5, and I didn't get very far into it. But then they announced this. And now I'm just like, well, I just bought this because you wouldn't release a good version sooner. <laughs> and had I know in hindsight that they were going to release this later this year, I wouldn't have bothered, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. But, they got uh, you. Oh, yeah, they got you for your money. It was only like, I don't know, maybe $10, $15 each, I think. I don't remember. And I had money on the PlayStation store anyway that I wasn't spending on anything else. So it's not a super big deal, but now I just have to buy them again to play 5. Because <laughs> I'm obviously going to want to play the Pixel Remaster 5 as opposed to the PS1 port, because that isn't the greatest anyway. Yeah, so it's yeah, a, it's a the minor the GBA annoyance. version's the best, but it has bad music. Yeah. For five. That's all I know. <laughs> uh, so hopefully the Pixel Remaster for 5 will be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just nice to finally have good versions good of Final yeah. Fantasy 1 and 2 and 5 and 6. Because really, yeah. the oh, only yeah. ones that were acceptable on Steam were the 3 and 4, but that's only because they were the remakes that were on yeah. there, you know? And, like, mm -hmm. even the remake of 4 is, like, drastically harder than the original 4. Like, the USA version of 4 is, like, an easy baby down version of 4, but the DS remake of 4 is, like, a super hard mode version that's even harder than the Famicom original. Weird. <laughs> yeah. What is that noise? Uh, There's static in Nicola's mic. Oh, oh no. I'm sorry. Let me go through that mic. Yeah. I mean, I'll turn down my uh, info. That's odd. Mm -hmm. Where that came from? Uh, is it better now? Yes. Yeah, it's better. Okay. All right. That's odd. Wonder what it was it was picking up. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, do we have more to save up the Pixel Remasters? Um. No, but I'm happy they're finally doing it. Yeah. I know yeah. some people don't love how they look, and I can kind of agree to some extent there's definitely a few weird issues and They're to not an extent ugly. i honestly I might would rather had just gotten clean ports you know as opposed to remasters there it's not like an ugly remaster though like the mobile versions or like chrono trigger was it long That's it's kind of weird Except for yeah. the font. The font's ugly. We already have yeah. people have already made mods to fix the font. So it's so like that's what I'm kinda of saying. It's just like you're putting in all this effort and it just kinda of looks as good as the originals, but different. Yeah, it's, it's kinda weird. It it feels a little weird. And plus they're really fucking expensive. Yeah, they are a little pricey. It's like uh, aren't if these phone games? All at... No. No, these aren't. Maybe no, I'm thinking something. These are on Steam, although I think they're probably getting phone releases. They they have mobile releases, yes, but they're also on Steam. Oh, gotcha. They're gotcha, not gotcha. on consoles, though. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I think they kept them this high because they wanted to, they don't want to lower the price of like the versions of like that we already have on Steam. I guess, but it's like okay, Final Fantasy one and two are twelve dollars each. Three, yeah. four, five, and six are eighteen dollars each. Yeah. If you buy them all together, it's like almost a hundred dollars, over a hundred if you count tax. Uh, aren't they still that price though? If you bought them all, the previous versions are on Steam now. I, I don't know. I, don't I know. think they probably yeah they it should. It does sell them in a bundle at a discount for like seventy five bucks, but. And then you wait for the Steam sale and it'll be thirty bucks. So prices on Steam, I don't really care about too much. It's not like Switch where sales true. are weird. That's true. 
like I said, I, I'm going to get Final Fantasy 3 Pixel Remaster, but I'm probably going to wait for it to go on sale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which makes sense. But all right. What we got next? Uh, Guilty Gear Strive. I believe I'm the only one here who's played it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, very good. I think you've you've definitely seen like the visuals at least. Like it's freaking gorgeous. It's like the anime style just in 3D. Like Arxis somehow has mastered that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the first game they did it was, it was before, um, Fighter Z. It was the Guilty Gear game that came out before that. It was one yes. where they started doing that this style. Yeah, but they it was 3D, but stylized to look at, make it look like anime. Yeah, although how often like the camera whips around in this and stuff, like when you do special stuff, it just, it just insane looking. It just gorgeous, like. Yeah, I, I I can't overstate that. Like that's just it's worth the price almost just for that. Even if you're not like huge into fighting games, I I just check out just how nice it looks. Um, right. I play a decent amount of fighting games, but I'm not great at anyone. <laughs> okay. But I was surprised. I thought Guild Gear would be more complicated, but it's actually surprisingly simple. Aside from certain like weird mechanics, all the characters don't have that many attacks. I think it's actually well, pretty isn't easy. That to because do. they drastically simplified it compared to previous titles because that's what i heard that uh, it, like, this one I, was I, I easier than the other ones before it i think it's slightly easier but not they didn't like butcher it like it's still yeah. well you know how fighting game like... fans are if it's slightly easier it's <laughs> trash <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i want to i want to have a clip of that just if it's slightly easier, it's trash. It's <laughs> <laughs> an annoying. I mean, truth, that that can be said about all things, of course. To an extent. People are elitist. Yeah. Don't be elitist. If it's, it's not on the highest difficulty, it's not worth playing. <laughs> Fighting games already have such a higher bear. And it's not like the <laughs> skill ceiling is any lower. The skill ceiling in here is still freaking absurd. Like, I've seen combos in this game already that I would never even hope to achieve in my lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> Just gotta use uh, Maze Forward Slash, though, and you win. I mean, isn't that oh, pretty yeah, much yeah. said about every fighting every game? Every character... Oh, yeah. Uh, backwards... Hold backwards forward attack for May. Uh, Tatsugeki is absurd. Y yeah. Have you seen, like, high-level May? It really is just spamming Tatsugeki, and it works, because that attack is... Lucas, have you seen what the Tatsugeki is? I have not. Well, there's a girl you play as named Mei who wields a giant anchor. And the one of her attacks is she just yells Tatsugeki and rides dolphins straight into your face. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Terrifying. You will develop a phobia of dolphins after a few matches against her, I guarantee As it. you should. Dolphins are terrifying. They are. They're creepy. They're, they got, they got like, prehensile, and prehensile wieners. They'll grab ya. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Do you guys remember that one? Oh my god! It was like the 3DS video things. You guys yeah. remember that app? Like, that and there was like office. one with the yeah, yeah, and there was one with the dolphins where they were killing people or something like that. <laughs> I don't remember this. You don't remember the dolphins like eating people and stuff? I swear this was on there. <laughs> this might. I, I at least I think it was. Pasta. I, Unless I'm thinking of a totally different <laughs> random YouTube video. Yes. You yeah. I, 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 I sent me a video of dolphins devouring people. <laughs> Number 14. <laughs> Nintendo dolphin video. <laughs> That's great. Number you know, I do five. actually have vague. Nintendo I have some sort of weird dolphins. vague. I have some sort of weird, like, there's something in the back of my mind and I can't remember it. <laughs> I think I've like locked it away. Yeah, it's like Sharknado, but with dolphins. Dolphinado. <laughs> dolphins are scarier than sharks. Yeah, I'll sharks would just like you know drown uh, above water. The dolphins they can just breathe above water. 
That and dolphins are more malicious. Sharks don't go after people because we're not that meaty. Dolphins just want to murder you for fun. Yeah, dolphins are too sport. intelligent. And that means that uh, <laughs> they can find joy in the things. In you know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the lesson is May is terrifying. Uh, watch out. Yeah. I've, I've been playing Eno. She's got, she has a guitar and she's a, like Bayonetta with a guitar. That's, <laughs> that sums her up. <laughs> so she's like Femme Dante. Sure, sure. Because yeah, Dante you know. has a guitar weapon in three. Oh yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> but she's got like Vanetta. She's got glasses, and she's a witch. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> but she is wearing red. So hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's just femme Dante. She's also some sort of eldritch being, from what I can gather from the lore. Guilty Gear lore seems insane. <laughs> from what yeah. The lore is that all technology stopped working at some point, so now everyone just uses magic. That's all I could figure out. You know, that makes sense. It's like the it's reverse just... of Little Witch Academia. Yes, it is. Where technology Which is... just got so advanced that people stopped bothering with magic because it took too much time. <laughs> Which is really fun. <laughs> I love that world film. It's like, um... who needs to fly around on a broom when you can just drive a car? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Guilty Gear is very goofy. Main character is named Soul Bad Guy. Yeah. That's his name. He's the good guy. Yeah, he's the good and guy. John his name is Goodman. Soul Bad Guy. And John Goodman <laughs> is the bad guy. Is that true? <laughs> Not in Guilty Please. Gear, but I'm sure there's a character in some media named John Goodman. There's Soul. There's Soul. Goodman in Breaking Bad, I think. Yeah, there you go. You can do that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. We figured it out. Villain. So bad guy. <laughs> hero. <laughs> um, all the characters of Guilty Gear are freaking insane. They're all nonsense. I, I, Lucas, we need to play it. It's pretty easy to get into. It's kind of just your average... You know, if you, you play, like, Skullgirls and stuff, you, you right? You probably kick my ass still, though. I do know how to Roman cancel vaguely, so... I don't know what that means. Exactly. So I won't tell you what it means, meaning I can always beat you. Yeah. See, this it's is not... why I don't play any fighting games that aren't Smash or Soul Calibur. To be fair, Guilty... I also want to say Strive's tutorial is insane. Like, it goes into pretty much everything. The only thing I think it's missing is a dedicated, like, mission mode where it teaches you, like, bread and butter combos for each character. Which is something I really like in, like, Eunice and Skullgirls have it. Where it's, you know, he has a ton of combos for every character. And you can't, like, you know, you just do each combo in order of complexity. It just teaches them. It's That's really helpful. And I don't think that's in Strive, from what I can tell. Mm. Hmm, so you gotta actually, like, you have to actually learn how to read fighting game notation and go under a wiki. And oh, man. look up a Strive combo. It's, like, just 500 numbers in a row. It's a nightmare to read. <laughs> Why is it so many? Because fighting. Oh, it. Because the combos are. It, it's an anime fighting. It's an anime fighter. You know, combos get stupid long. This isn't like Tekken or attacks where combos are like three attacks. Yeah. This, <laughs> this is, is an like anime a Japanese fighter with like market. 50. You know, this was made for people yeah. who played Super Mario Bros. Two, the lost levels, and was like, that was easy. Yeah, this this is for people who want to. Uh, katana fights virtually or if you do miss one input you've already died yeah although i appreciate um uh, strive also has uh you don't if you're in the corner if they get up you up in the corner and hit you for a while you just break the wall and go flying to another part of the stage that's a nice nice mechanic so you don't just get so a rushdown character doesn't just shove you in the corner and instantly obliterate you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nice touch yeah it's, it's nice Oh, so the music uh, is fire. Oh, yeah, it all goes so hard. Every character has their own theme, and all the themes are vocal. I got guitar. Oh, it's, it's awesome. Go look up May's theme. Yeah. So, and <laughs> Dude, I didn't even get the game, but I was listening to May's theme when the game came out for, like, three days straight. The disaster of passion goes hard. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, Yeah. Go buy it and uh, fight me. 
there's probably rollback netcode, so it's probably the online's probably good. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't played too much online. I played one match of online and got my ass kicked. So I need to practice more. <laughs> yeah. You didn't totally get key hard enough. I, I you know, I have I, I really wanted to play May and I like her. Her playstyle looks fun, but also I hate charge inputs where you hold backwards <laughs> and then fling forward and hit a button. Because that's her dolphin. Is yeah. I, I just my muscle memory just could never get used to that. Like, I've never been able to play, like, Guile and stuff, despite liking, like, his playstyle and everything. And I still like charge inputs. When it's makes sense. Stuff like, you know, Paducah and sure you can input are, like, burned into my brain. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why the League of Legends fighting game is going to end up being, like, the most accessible fighting game ever. Because they're going to tie all that shit into just a single button press. But it's going to be on a cooldown timer. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, so it'll be more balanced. Um, so you can't spam that shit, and it'll be super easy. So it'll be accessible to new players. That, I do agree that that does decrease the skill ceiling in a way where you can't do as complicated combos because you can't possibly have as many attacks on a character. Right. Yeah. But at, at the same time, just having making it way easier to get into could just be really interesting. Yeah. I didn't play um that Blast Blue, not Blast Blue, um the Grand Blue, uh, f Grand Blue Fantasy fighting game that came out a while ago. I actually did add that mechanic, where it had um, you know, you could just play it like regular fighting game, or you could have the option to have like cooldowns on every attack, which is kind of interesting. And I never got around to playing that. It was really good. Mm. Yeah. But um, but yeah, Strive's good. Go go play it. It'll probably be at Evo or whatever. I mean, did they already announce the Evo line, though? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm almost positive it is. It's a good year for fighting games, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, it has been. Uh, it's been a good uh, year for new... video games just in general. Yeah. It's but... a new Melty Blood coming out. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> fighting games. Like, the best uh, JRPG of all time, Bravely Default 2, came out, and we got, like, good ports for PC ports of, like, Final Fantasy 1 through 6. Yeah, it's a pretty good year. The new s and is coming out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> we'll be yeah. talking about that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Want to move on, or...? Yeah, what do we got next? Um, uh, Resident Evil Village. Well, I've played this to the end. Have either of you gotten around to this? No. I played this back when it came out. It was on launch. Yeah, I have not gotten to it yet. I, don't I know still think it's it. really good. <laughs> I, have some, I definitely have some issues with it, but looking back, but at the same time, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. oh, what were you saying, Chestnut? Uh, no, just that it's just like, since we've talked about this multiple times in the past, uh, we probably shouldn't spend too long on it. Yeah, I, I've seen, I just want to say, I've seen the complaints since, like, I feel like a lot of people's opinions have been like, oh, it's really disjointed, and a lot of, like, the stuff feels like it's from, like, different games matched together, and I'm like, that's the best part. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> like, you go from, like, Lady Demetriscu's castle, which feels like classic Resident Evil, then I'm, like, fighting ghost dolls, and then, like, a, it's, like, constantly jumping to completely different moods. It's, it's great. I love that. Mm hmm and I think that will really make the replay value fun, honestly, because it'll be like, you know, keep like everything will keep feeling fresh. Right, exactly. Nothing has time to get old. It's great. I, I would have liked at least maybe one more area that felt like Lady Demetri Q's castle, though, because that has like the more classic Resident Evil where it's just kind of going back and forth in one big area finding items. The factory at, towards the end got near that, but more uh, linear. Honestly, that's my one problem. I can't wait to play this game because I've seen like quite a few clips on YouTube. My favorite one so far is when uh, you go to like. <laughs> but yeah, just say back the area. I don't even know what you the area the... is. You the, he, you just see oh, okay, him. You just that. see him flipping up a switch, and then his hand just gets sliced off. <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty early on. <laughs> yes, yeah, and I'm just like, whoa, okay. That's actually one of my favorite parts of the game because it's actually real freaky because it's like, ah, I don't have a hand, don't know. <laughs> and then you have to, like, run around. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, 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 it spooked me and I wasn't even playing the game. I, I think my ultimate opinions after looking back are I don't think it hits the same highs as 7, but overall, like, it, it's 
always good. Like it doesn't have any of the lows that seven did as well. Seven had higher highs and lower lows. And this is just consistently good. Right. Right. Understandable. Um, yeah. I feel like the reason why all the areas feel very different is isn't it because they got like different directors or whatever to make each I, individual area? I just assume that. They did the same with seven where a different team did each uh member of the Baker family. Yeah. And that worked really well for seven. And um yeah. I, I think they did the I same thing, know. but like to much greater extent because this one feels much less connected than they all did in seven or it's like in seven like every single member of the baker family felt very unique and different but they all felt coherent together you're still always in the house yeah yeah Even... yeah um but yeah this this just goes nuts <laughs> yeah it's yeah this also this is a little nitpick i i, I don't know because i haven't really fully replayed it all the way through but i felt like there's a lot of weapons you can get, but a lot of them feel like straight upgrades to previous weapons, unlike Resident Evil 4, where every weapon had its use, like even like really early game ones. On replays, it was fun to use really early game weapons all the way through, because they all had like weird gimmicks. This one, it just feels like the more expensive weapons are always better. Yeah. Which I don't know if that's completely true, because I haven't replayed it multiple times, but still. Yeah, I think that's, that's for thing. the most part true. That's a little nitpick, but it does decrease replay compared to like something like Resident Evil 4, where every weapon is useful. Right. No, I can agree with you there. I mean, yeah. Mercenary mode is fun, though. <laughs> but, yeah, we talked about this a lot before. Uh, it's great. It's probably the second best game I've played this year. Um, Alright. I need to get around to playing this. But okay. let's let's, uh, let's move on. Next game is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. All right. Yeah. It uses the blazingly um, fast power of the SSD. Pretty much. Uh, so <laughs> I played through it. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk about it before, just because um, it came out like at E3 time, so we were kind of busy doing that, and then we didn't really get a chance to go back to it so that's why we're doing it now and as someone who's played through every single ratchet and clank game uh who's been playing the series for over a decade now who's waited 11 years since the last full-length new ratchet and clank game I can say that Rift Apart it was good. <laughs> it was good. That's it. Could have been worse. They could have fucked it up harder. Um, I think it was pretty good for the most part. I do have a few issues with it. Namely, I think it's too short. And I'm not even like saying it's like too short compared to like the rest of the series, because for the most part. It's about, I want to say, the same-ish length. It does have fewer levels than other games in the series. Like, right. I, but the, the biggest problem I have when I say it's too short is, namely, I feel like they didn't give enough time for the writing to make the story feel complete, if that makes sense. Yeah. Do you think they're planning like, sequels for this? Or maybe, like, sort of trilogy thing? Well... I'm not so sure if I'd say trilogy, but obviously there's going to be more oh, games. Yeah. This is literally the oldest Sony IP that's still alive. So Pretty much. Yeah. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. But, like, like namely, it's just, like, it, a lot of story moments in the game felt really rushed and felt like they should have had way more time dedicated to them. And I don't really want to get too deep into them because right. of spoilers you know i don't want to spoil the game for anybody but there's definitely moments in the game where it feels like hey you know maybe we should have like a whole level dedicated to the two characters being together and like talking about their issues you know as opposed to just having one cutscene where they yell at each other and then both leave and then they come back the next level for the final boss you know it's just like i don't know yeah 
It's like <laughs> in the original game, when Ratchet and Clank were angry at each other, they would argue for like five levels straight. And then they would, you know, reconcile and like they'd work through the fucking issue. In yeah. this game, it's like they're trying to do something similar. Zach, your mic is all. Oh fucking... no. Oh, again? Oh no. Yeah, it's uh... like really bad. All right. But like in this game, they try to do like lots of like emotional character moments. And some of them work, but I also feel like some of them didn't really hit the f mark and what i mean by that is like i get what they were trying to go for and i understand what they were trying to do but i feel like they go through it so fast that it doesn't really land if that makes sense yeah no i, I get what you're saying yeah well it's just like because there's a there's a scene in the game where you're rile grinding on like a giant robot and like the robot is like the fixer but he's having an existential crisis because um pirates were invading the village he was in and then he blew them up with a laser and then he has an existential crisis <laughs> about it it's like oh i'm not the fixer anymore now i'm the destroyer ah you know Hello. he's having a, a, an emotional moment and i get that and then he's just like because in the game like clank's arm is broken right and so the fixer will address Clank and it's just like, you gotta like acknowledge that you're broken and shit. And Clank's like, no, 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 no. I'm not broken. I'm fixed. I'm fine the way I am. And I get what they're saying. It just happens so quickly, you know, that it kind of went over my head when the first time where it's like, I understood what was happening, but it didn't fully process it, you know? Right. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And I wish they had spent took like a little bit slower you know where it's like i don't think it was a bad uh moment but i wish it was done a little better, better if that makes sense yeah because it's just kind of mm. like because like clank just like is like no 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 i'm fixed you fix me <laughs> and then like everything's fine you know it's like oh no the fixer's fine he is over his emotional crisis Everybody's like happy again. Gameplay <laughs> perspective, how's the pacing though? Like, the gameplay perspective, hmm. the pacing is fine for the most part. Okay. But it also goes by a little fast. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if like stretching it out could like hurt the gameplay. But there isn't sure. a lot of slow moments. You know? Oh. Um And I have this other issue with the game, but I, I don't want to talk about it because it's technically a spoiler because uh you shouldn't know this character exists yet effectively okay so it's like, I, gig latin or something i, I can't but like <laughs> yeah i'd like to go into it without spoiling it but um there's effectively no... the equivalent is that there's no giant clank segment there should be Okay. But not specifically Clank. Okay. Yeah. But, um... But, yeah. yeah. Like, it's it's hard to talk about, like, the, the issues I have with the plot without going into spoiler stuff. And for the most part, I yeah, don't I have that many terrible. issues with the plot. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Like, I don't think it was super terrible. I also don't think the writing was specifically great, though. Like, a lot of people are, like, praising yeah. the writing for being, like, Pixar level and shit. And... Yeah, I have been hearing, like, seeing a lot of... It's like... The original games are way better. <laughs> in their writing. <laughs> right. It's like... Th this this feels very tropey and cliche, to be honest. And with no yeah. strong central theme. Like, the central theme is supposed to be, like... Um... I want to say it's supposed to be like, oh, it's okay if you're disabled. I yeah. think that's supposed to be the theme of the game. But, like, okay. <laughs> it's just kind of not really there for wow. the most part. Outside of, like, that one cutscene I was talking about a second ago. Huh. Eh. Eh. Like, it's supposed yeah. to be a character is working through, like, emotions and stuff, but, like, that's not even what the series was originally about. The series was originally about killing capitalists with the power of the Second <laughs> Amendment. 
Exactly. To be fair, they, eh, they, they, can, they can explore mm. different themes, but if they're not exploring those themes, then yes, it kind of destroys the point, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, the problem with this game really boils down to the same problems with Tools of Destruction, which is they hired a bunch of hack writers who have no respect for the source material, um, who fuck up the lore, and then they try to salvage it for the next 15 years. Oh my god. And we've been stuck on this stupid fucking plot for ever since. Like, like, I really want to preface this. Like, Tools of Destruction came out in, like, what, 2006, 2007? I want to say. Yeah. And we are still on the same fucking plot from Tools of Destruction. <laughs> and it's the like, worst plot the they've trilogy? ever done. The, the, it's, it's the worst plot they've ever done. And we've been stuck on it for 15 fucking years. Damn. Well, they just don't, don't fucking end it. <laughs> they don't learn. Like Get that's right. what I'm really mad about. There's this is no there's no resolution. It's just like, just fucking say it. Say it. Say it. Is is Ratchet going to go use the Dimensionator to find the other Lombaxes, or is he not? Is he gonna say I don't care, I don't need it? Just give me an answer so we can fucking move on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, but you know the gameplay was great. <laughs> that's yeah. good the shooting was good i loved the new dash move it was, it was absolutely fantastic it was super fun looks it's got the ray tracing the yes. guns were pretty good for the most part although the i guns feel like there's a few cool. too many like straightforward pistol shooty guns mm. there was like three of them you know uh it's like that's not I don't that know. bad i, I like I get people like the buzz blades, and I don't dislike them, but I'm kind of sick of seeing them. I kind of wish we would retire the buzz blades and do a different disc saw weapon. Like what? You know? I don't know. Bring back the disc blade gun from 3. That one was good. Do that again. Mm. Bring back the chopper from 2, but make make it actually good this time. Make it so I can shoot it without needing to stand still. Yeah. Yeah. Also, they could have put the suck cannon in this game, and they didn't. And it kind of baffles my mind because they could have done it so well. Because all the guns in this game use the haptic triggers of the PS5, where it's like you hold it down halfway and it does one thing, and then you hold it down the full way and it does a different thing. Right. Almost every gun in the game utilizes them. They could have done that with the suck cannon, where you hold it down halfway to suck and then all the way to fire. But they didn't. And they didn't. They didn't bring back the suck cannon. Which is shame. Right. Shame on you, Insomniac, for only using the suck cannon twice, despite it being the most iconic weapon in the entire series. Uh, it sounds interesting just by the name. Yeah. The suck so how cannon. the suck cannon works in the first and the third game is you hold down the fire button to have like a vacuum suck effect that can suck in small enemies. That you can okay. then use as ammo. Oh. Because once you're done sucking and you suck up all the small enemies, you can then fire them out of the cannon at bigger enemies to kill them with them. Got it. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like using the vacuum in Luigi's Mansion when you suck up like a ball or something and then launch it out. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Gotcha. It's great. Sounds great. Yeah. Reminds me of the Billy Hatcher gun from Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little similar to that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but overall, like, I, I complained a bit about it, but I did really like Rift Apart. You think it's a better step in direction than 2016? Yeah, I'd say okay. so. Like, honestly, my biggest problem with the overall writing is that this game is just not funny at all. But it also, I don't think, was nearly as cringy as 2016. Because 2016 wasn't funny, but it was a cringe fest. <laughs> this one... Well. It wasn't. I don't know. I, it just kind of feels really weird to me. Because everybody always compares like the Ratchet & Crank series to like Pixar and shit. Right. I don't feel like yeah. the games are Pixar at all. I feel that they are DreamWorks. You yeah. should be comparing them to his DreamWorks. 
Because the first Ratchet and Clank game is essentially Shrek. Yeah. You know? But Got now, that. the later Attitude. games, it feels like they're trying to be like Kung Fu Panda or How to Train Your Dragon. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> More so probably How to Train Your Dragon because How to Train Your Dragon doesn't have that many jokes into it. Kung Fu Panda is actually still funny while also having emotion and heart. Yeah. You know? Kind of like the Shrek, you know, Shrek. Like, that's the thing. Like, the OG games were like Shrek. The PS3 games tried to be more like Kung Fu Panda, where they still tried to keep the humor and, you know, have more emotion and stuff. And then these games, they just kind of feel like they're trying to be How to Train Your Dragon. Oh. I, I, I see. Yeah, I can no see jokes. what you're saying. Uh, yeah. I, I, get, I, I get these. And then, like, the like... PSP games are like Shark Tale. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is all checks out. Yeah. So, anytime you hear another person compare Ratchet and Clank or Insomniac to Pixar, you shut them down. You tell them, no, they are not Pixar, they are DreamWorks. <laughs> Just, no, stop. That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong comparison. These games are not like Toy Story, they are Shrek. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. All I mean, right. like, could have been funnier. Could have had a few more jokes. But Dr. all in all, Paris pretty good. Is pretty decent. But all around, you would say it's pretty good. Yeah. It. Yeah. There's worse Ration and Clank games. I'd say this is still way better than Tools of Destruction because at least it like actually feels like a big step forward on a gameplay level. Right. Like, yeah. they brought the hover boots back from... Uh, what's it? Uh, Crack in Time. They brought the hover boots back from Crack in Time, and they're way better in here. They did them really, really well. Uh, the new Phantom Dash move feels great for both platforming and for combat. And overall, I really love the collectibles as well. Like, every time you collected a gold bolt, you'd unlock a new collectible, and they were all, like, really fun. You had, like, cool filters and, like, oh, uh, like wrench reskins. One of them was, like, a keyblade. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Goofy Cosmetics is a, a fun encouragement for collectibles. Yeah. Oh, and I didn't even talk about the armor, because, like, they completely revamped the armor system. So instead of buying new armor sets that in reduce damage you now find pieces of armor that will give you passive buffs permanently once you find them. But they also double as, like, cosmetic equipables that you can actually, um, like, repaint and stuff. Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah, so you can, like, dress up Ratchet and, like, however you feel like. And on top of that, they did the genius move of making it so that if you're wearing a helmet and stuff, your helmet will automatically be taken off when you go into a cutscene so you can still see the facial animations. <laughs> <laughs> oh good good call yeah. and another thing to compare it to 2016 is that the overall production value of this game drastically better than it was in 2016 especially in the like in-game cutscenes are actually well animated and the characters are actually looking at each other and <laughs> the performances are a lot better in this one okay. right. both voice actors and uh, like animation wise it's a lot better than 2016, which felt really cheap. Really? Like uh, uh, 26, I haven't played 2016, but what I've seen for name, the top, uh, like the in-game cutscenes when you're interacting okay. with NPCs and stuff. Okay. Okay. Super cheap. Like it, it almost looks as bad as like Mass Effect Andromeda. Like honestly, it's oh, actually yeah. terrible. Oh, Especially when you compare it to any other game in the Ratchet and Clank series, which always nails this. It's like, wow, that's terrible, you know? Yeah. 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 The game looks great. The game plays great. Story could have been better, but at least they tried. Yeah. All so, right. We want to move on? Overall. <laughs> yeah, let's move sure. on. All right. What do we got next? Knockout City. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one. 
Oh yeah, knockout city. Hold on, let me get this set up real quick. Man, I I've been playing I haven't played it recently, but I played a good amount of it. I played the uh that little beta thing they had for the weekend before it got released. That was pretty fun. But um as of right now, it is pretty it it's definitely on my list for one of my favorite games came out that I'm playing right now. But there's definitely certain things they can improve on. Like I feel like some of the spawn points for the items are actually just really spread out in my opinion. I feel like yeah. they could they could add more like platforms to grab different type of balls. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, I think the map design is pretty good though. I think it's slightly big for the amount of players that are in a match, but yeah, it's only a three v three, yes. Yeah, but I think they're they're pretty good. Um, I think. I think there was like a rumor of them adding in the new update or something, uh, some new ball types. I'm not quite sure what they are. What are the current ball types, Cap? Oh man, I couldn't even. I couldn't even tell you. Hold on. I remember correctly, there was like a moon ball. I think yeah. that gave you like multiple balls, or maybe that was the multi ball that did that. The moon yeah. ball did something else. Yeah, there's an actual multi ball. Wow. Then you could throw people at other people, yes? Yes. <laughs> so we got the bomb ball, um, which is self-explanatory. It's it You throw it, there's a timer, and it detonates. The cage ball, and then you, that's basically trapping your opponent in a ball, and you can hit another opponent with okay. them. And then we got the moon ball, which um, defy gravity and jump higher. Multi-ball, cool. obviously, throw three balls at the same time and then the sniper ball which is a long range <laughs> and it has to be charged yeah it's like the chargers from splatoon yes which Burr. which me firsthand i've hit some nasty snipes <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> sad it's pretty satisfying dodgeball is the, this game just a concept is so goofy <laughs> I, w I wish they had the uh the voice line I'm not even quite sure what game it's from, but just the headshot. I think yeah, that's that, that would isn't that Quake? I Do think Quake Three is where all the, all those voices come from, but I can't remember if Quake Three even has headshots. Like the you know like the double Monster kill, kill. Multi kill. Yeah, the, those are from Quake Three. Kill streak. Yeah, th those are from Quake Three, I believe. What I remember. Quake Three has the best fucking announcer. It does. <laughs> but yeah, um, I definitely think it was worth all the hype it got from me. I it was everything <laughs> that I wanted and more. So I still have yet to figure out how to play as a World of Warcraft character in this game. They don't exist. <laughs> that was the most. That still was the most bizarre trailer. I want to so, be playing as a World of Warcraft character and throwing yeah. dodgeballs at people. This game has no tomboy princess. Uh, rip this oh, game. Not even a, doesn't even have a football guy. Doesn't even have a cod man. Oh my god. It only has, like, bootleg ninjala characters. <laughs> Those are already, like, felt Boot like bootleg Splatoon. Pretty much. <laughs> but yeah i i had i don't have too much to say about it because i mean it really is just dodgeball and it really didn't get as much hype as i thought it would um but i like the game i i definitely give it a solid eight out of ten <laughs> yeah but yeah i think we can i think we can move on there's not really yeah. too much for me to say on this we're already an hour and 20 minutes in, and we're only, like, halfway through the first list. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're going to be talking about games to be released this part, this session, then, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we can it, maybe uh, expand that list a bit more and do that for next stream or something. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, what do we got yeah, next? Yeah, let's just keep talking about this year. We got Metopia. We got Metopia. Oh, yeah. Something about Metopia. 
It came out yeah. this year, technically. Uh, yeah. The, the re-release, honestly, uh, yeah, it's worth it. It's It looks a lot nicer than the 3DS one, obviously. The Mii Maker in there is insane. I hope they add that actual Mii Maker to the Switch, because I love all the features. You can make anything... Yeah, like this is I, this is actually like an amazing re-release. It's like a steal if you didn't buy it on 3DS. Yeah. You know, you got such an improved version. Now I know how, how every single Wii U owner feels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I bought this on the 3DS and I did love it. Like I, I absolutely loved Metopia. I thought it was fantastic. Um, and I didn't bother to get the Switch um re-release just because i didn't want to buy it again <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know if it's totally worth it unless you like really want to make knees like if you haven't if you've already played the original i don't know if it's totally worth picking this up yeah but Plus, yeah, it didn't no, otherwise... fix my one issue of being able to turn yeah, off yeah. teammate auto battle yeah oh well i just want to play the game man <laughs> There isn't much gameplay in this game. I would like to do at least the bare minimum of being able to control my party. Yeah. Eh. I'm just hoping for a Tomodachi life re-release with this Mii Maker now. That would, that would be amazing. Honestly, they should just update the default Mii Maker to have all this shit. I know? I know. Yeah, they should. They really should. But I'm hoping we get a Miitopia 2 where it yeah. fixes my issues and it's a new game. That, that I'd buy. Yeah. Like it, like I'm pretty sure this sold very well. Probably way better than Nintendo expected it to. Oh, yeah. oh, for sure. Yeah, I've actually seen so, quite a bit of people playing it actually. So hopefully, thanks to the viral marketing of people making all their goofy me's, um, <laughs> Nintendo will see that and decide to make a Miitopia too. Because I would definitely get that. I'd honestly, I'd hope for a new Tomodachi life over a new Miitopia. I'm gonna be honest. I honestly or, enjoyed Metopia more, I'd say. Hmm. But I, I liked both, so. Or, or some other new goofy me games. There's not enough me games anymore. These are fun. <laughs> yeah. This is true. People don't respect the me. I know. I need more games that they'll let me play as if some sort of freakish abomination me I made. Yeah. More games should have the entire concept of anything even slightly humanoid as the playable character. <laughs> Abstract being that could be anyone or anything. <laughs> it's good. Okay. Do uh, you have anything else to say or do you want to just move on? Yeah, let's just move on. Just might as well move on. It's yeah. good. Play it if you haven't played the original. Okay, so another re-release. Skyward Sword HD. Let's go. Yeah. This has the, my favorite thing about this is the the wallpaper we have for this. It's still my wallpaper Which... on my computer. I've heard this has had a lot of quality of life stuff, by the way, compared to the Wii version. Yeah, it did. Like, I'd totally buy this if it wasn't 60 bucks. Yeah. If this was it's... 40, I, I, I'd buy it. Yeah. Really, what this is is just should have been what Skyward Sword released as, you know, originally. Yeah. Uh, because for the most part, all the quality of life stuff is just them cutting out all the bullshit extra dialogue that's super unnecessary. Like your battery is low? Yeah. <laughs> like, your battery is low. This is a blue rupee every time you turn on the game. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's goofy. The motion controls are better because the gyroscope and the Joy-Cons are just better than the gyroscope in the Wii was. Yeah. Makes sense. And they also added the thing where you can remove motion controls and just use stick controls. Which is always that nice. Could, that could but, feel real. By the way, also from what I know, if you're playing with motion controls, the right stick is just for camera now, which sounds really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I still don't feel like it fixes the fundamental design issues of this game has the worst combat in any game oh, ever. Oh, you whack people it's, with the it's sword. It's not even the awesome. worst combat in any Zelda game. It's the worst combat in any game ever. 
It really? feels awesome. No, that front sword feels awesome. I don't know. It feels like might... shit. It feels great. You <laughs> whack people with a it sword. It is terrible. Link looks like he's like walking around with like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, great. It's terrible. It's the worst <laughs> thing ever. Every single enemy is the exact same. And they're the most annoying enemy ever. They're just, everyone's blocking your attacks. It's terrible. It's like real sword fighting. It's not like real sword fighting at all. It's not even like fake real sword fighting. It's just ass. <laughs> and and they've already done this concept 20 times better in like fucking VR and shit. That's actually done it correctly. You I know? don't know. Sword, sword, it's pretty fun to just whack people. Like you waggly weird it's modes. It's not fun awesome. because they block your attack and then electrocute you. <laughs> <laughs> well, get good. There's no getting good. The controls are ass. Oh, uh, he does uh, have I, a point. I, I, I went one hundred percent in Scarlet Sword. I beat the boss rush <laughs> without dying, so uh, I am I was Scarlet Sword God. I unlocked the Hylian Shield. And I put so like I fifty skills. hours in it. <laughs> but I, I became bad. a pro. <laughs> the only good part of this game is like the dungeons, honestly. They They're are, really good. I love the gimmicks and all the dungeons. They're all so cool. Like the, yeah, the, the dungeons gimmick. are really good, and some of the bosses are good. But also some I, of the it, bosses are ass. Some of the bosses are amazing though, so it's like. And I'm trying to think what, what were like the bad bosses. I like Yurahem, even if it is built. I think he'd probably be like the Yurahem. hardest. He's hard, but he's fun. I don't know. I think it, he's the part where the sword fighting actually comes together. I feel like and. Yeah, but it's just awkward and crappy. It's it literally the game is designed around the fact that Link has the worst sword stance of any human being ever lived. <laughs> In front of him, like a weird remote. It's really funny. It's terrible. It's so immersion for everything in this game breaks your immersion. It does At look least pretty to the goofy. Wii version. Those, the, I'm, I'm sure the Switch version cuts down on that a lot. The immersion breaking shit. Like, Link, your batteries are dying. Go recharge your batteries. Oh, yeah, that was just like, oof. You know. Yeah, little stuff like that does add up. Yeah. But, um. And the I sky is shit. <laughs> it's like, this it's is the weird. worst, like, overworld ever. It's so weirdly, it's it's weird because like Skyloft, I don't know, has a lot going on. But then you get off that central island and there's just nothing. It's just yeah. empty. But and Skyloft honestly, is like Skyloft really is detailed. too big for its own good. Like there's a lot of shit in it, but it's like very spread out. And so it forces you to run yeah. around in it all the time. Eh. And then outside of Skyloft in the sky, there's like two or three mini game islands and then one tavern island and that's literally it yeah it is weirdly empty the sky yeah especially when you compare it to like the ocean in wind waker yeah the ocean in wind waker yeah. was actually gorgeous yeah well that's huge well exactly. and that, it, it, the sky is like uh they put so much effort into like you know like flying in your bird and, like the sky like beautiful and it's like oh there's no, nowhere to fly to you just kind of, like, yeah. fly to your destination and you're done. And then, like, <laughs> when you're on the ground, everything's super linear. Which is fine. Yeah. I mean, it's fine to have linearity, but it's also, once again, an action-adventure game. You know. I'm okay with it having, like, linear structure. But, you know, it's a little too linear. And it's design, I feel like. Yeah. But you know, I'm not giving Skyward Sword a second chance after how hard it burned me the first time. Not for sixty fucking dollars. Yeah. It doesn't deserve my sixty dollars a second time. Well you technically know. it wasn't your sixty dollars like, the I first time. Eh, I don't care. I don't care if I got it for a Christmas gift. <laughs> you know, it still yeah, burned. Santa me. got it for you. He worked hard for that sixty bucks he spent on you that year. Yeah, and it was and I was so fucking excited for that game, and it, and I played it, and it was ass. Why you gotta do Santa like that, man? He he, he was thinking of you. Nah. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? I don't remember. You distracted me with your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I, no, I literally like lost pace of what I was going to say. Now I can't remember. You said you sword sword burned you. Yeah. 
Well, no, before that, I think. Oh, yeah, Scout Sword doesn't... Like, I don't care how many quality of life improvements and how much better it is compared to the original. It's like, you don't deserve $60 if I played you the first time and you were dog shit, you know? Yeah. It's like, if I play a game, like, on release and pay full price for it and it's terrible, I'm not buying the re-release even if it fixes, like, half of its issues. Yeah. I think most people would say the same. But, oh. uh, yeah. Not much we could say about Skyward Sword. How many years old is this game now? Like, 50 years ago? When did this come out on Wii? I don't know. <laughs> Only like 11 years. It's, still it's, like it's over a decade, though. right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's over a decade. It's old. So, 12 years. Let's talk about newer games. Suppose. Move on. Yeah. Oh, man, Pokemon board game. Unite. Yeah, this about. one came out like a week ago. Pokemon Unite. We're going to talk yeah. about it again. Uh, all I've seen is they had a Gardevoir with a hat. That's all yeah. I know. I I'm pretty sure Pokemon we talked about this just the last stream, but we're talking yeah, about but... it again simply because I want to shit on it more because we didn't... We weren't rough on it enough, you know? <laughs> we were too nice. We yes. didn't talk about how pay-to-win it is. <laughs> It's a pay to win. See, it's I, I, very I, pay to win. I've been doing the ultimate disgrace to this game by not knowing anything about it, which I think is even more of a burn than yeah. insulting it. But we gotta warn everybody to not install Pokemon Unite onto the Nintendo Switch system it's for free. League of Legends, it's a virus that will yes. install a game called Pokemon <laughs> Unite on the Switch. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Do not go to the Nintendo eShop and download Pokemon Unite from the Nintendo eShop. It will download a virus onto your Switch called Pokemon Unite. <laughs> Almost as bad as this one called, there's this malware called League of Legends. No, yeah. that one's good. That one's good. I checked it. I no. promise. No. It's not safe. No, it's good. It's dangerous for a computer. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a fire, ha a fire hazard in, in three states. <laughs> okay. So it's but, good. So what's so awful about Unite? Um, basically, everything costs a ton of money, and if you want to actually be good at the game, you have to spend money in order to Oof. boost your character's stats and shit. Oh no! Like, if, like you can earn things. Like some stuff can be unlocked through like earning currency by playing the game, but you earn the currency obscenely slowly. So you just, just have to like grind me. it out to, like, unlock characters for one. And then two, on top of that, there's also, like, unlockable items, which kind of, like, function like the room, the old rune pages were for League, right? Right. You had to buy your fucking runes and shit, and that just gave you a, a distinct advantage in the game. Pokemon Unite has a similar system with its held items, where you equip something before the game that you have to buy. And you can level up those held items, but that also costs money to just level it up to make it better. So right. whoever is the highest rank, you know, in the game is just going to be the person who dishes out the most cash for all the broken items to spend them to level them up to be the most overpowered by just having better stats at the start of battle than everybody else. That's kind this of like you don't, you don't see design like that too often outside of like mobile games anymore, honestly. I'm, I'm kind of shocked. Game. Oh, I mean, it's a mobile. I mean, even at mobile games, I think that's kind of taboo at this point. And they're gonna get uh, away like, with it because it's Pokemon. Yeah, and people like, will think, fucking defend it. I think most games have kind of moved over to like the loot box format. Yeah, which is shitty, but at yeah. least it's not I like think paid this game to win. also has loot boxes as well. Oh, of, of, of course. I think does. it does. I'm not 100 percent sure because once again, I did not download this game because I am not an evil person. I'm a good person. I don't play bad games most of the time. Sometimes I do, but then I regret it. You know, I, I, I repent for my sins. I go to church, you know, I, I go to the priest and say, I'm sorry, God, I played Skyward Sword. I did it. I, I didn't mean to, but I did it. Yeah. I bought the DLC okay. for Pokemon Sword and Shield. I oh, bought no. it used, but I bought the DLC. I shouldn't have. <laughs> You gotta go repent by paying a good game, like... Yeah, I'm gonna have to say 20 know. Hail Marys and 5 Our Fathers. <laughs> what's what's 20 Hail Marys in video games, like? Uh, I don't even know. 
20 you games go... of TF2. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 that, that'll work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that'll be no problem for you, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, basically, if you want Pokemon, uh, go play Pokemon Snap instead. Yeah, that's arguably way better. Yeah. We forgot to put that on the list, so let's just talk about that now. Do you have anything guys to say about out. Pokemon Snap? I forgot that existed. Yeah, Pokemon me too. Okay. Up until just now when I remembered it. Uh, I think it was good. Yeah. It's definitely better than Unite. If you had to choose between downloading the free-to-play Pokemon Unite game or paying $60 for Pokemon Snap, just pay $60 for Pokemon yeah. Snap. It's worth the money. Yeah. 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 All right. So that's the moral of the story. Don't play Pokemon Unite. Just play yeah, Snap. Don't, don't play MOBAs. No, Definitely you can play MOBAs. Do you can play MOBAs. No, no, you can't. It's a it's a crime against humans. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not. The stick of this, yeah, the stick of this podcast is Lucas plays League of Legends, and then both of us will shit on League of Legends. You play League of Legends <laughs> too. Yeah, but at least I know. I it many I'm years ago. I got off. I had to go through Le League of Legends rehab. It was no, hell. you didn't. No, you didn't. You just played something else. I didn't play yeah. any MOBAs. Yeah. I ain't going back to MOBAs. I, I, they, they ain't taking me back alive. Yeah. Why not? What did, where, did, where did all this hate just grow from? From it being League of Legends? I get that, you know, League of Legends gives you that high. But you gotta realize but, oh, it's terrible for you. Oh my god! Yeah, have you seen how angry people get after playing two matches a league? It's like it's, it's like doing two whole it marathons. It takes up way too much time. Not all that time spent playing once. League of Legends, all that time spent playing MOBAs could be spent, you know, playing any other video game genre. Like yeah, one but... whole crack. It's like a, all the like other one video games you could have played and bought heroine. with all the money and time you've wasted on League of Legends. Hey, I've only spent like a thousand. This is true for everybody. <laughs> anyway, but enough about MOBAs. Yes. How about you? <laughs> what okay. do we got next? Cruelty Squad. Oh, this game. Uh, well, I had not beaten the first level before that we had planned to talk about this. So I had to rush and beat the first level. And then I also managed to beat the second level. This game's hard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so if you haven't seen it, it's... I don't even know how to put it into words to visuals. Uh, um, it looks like a game that Vinny Vinesauce would play on Sundays. Yes, except for it's actually, like, really good. And, like, clearly has a ton of work put into, like, the design. And it intentionally looks like vomit nightmare yeah. thing Vomit in the ball pit but like the actual like gameplay design is like insane it's just absurdly detailed like i don't think i've seen like a stealth game on this level uh, i mean i'm not even gonna call it a stealth game you could play it as like a full-on like action shooter if you want it's pretty much just gameplay is just okay here's an open area you have a target to kill do whatever and yeah, yeah. the gameplay's bonkers enemies can you kill you in seconds but you can... funko pop man the creator of funko pop it kind of yeah yeah that's pretty much it it kind of reminds me of my friend pedro in that aspect of here's a level here are the enemies have fun you know, it's not even just enemies you could murder civilians and devour them to recover health you could do things like that oh <laughs> and you're, you're, there's no discouragement for like most most games it's like all right don't hurt the civilians no here it's like all right shoot every civilian and eat them or something or throw them their skulls at your enemies to obliterate them oh yeah. there's just so many ways to play it's it's nonsense yeah once you unlock the grapple hook that's where the game really opens up yeah that's when yeah i mean you could pause the game and open up a, the stock market and buy and sell stocks to make more money for upgrades if you want yeah this is the kind of game we're talking about here you can go fishing I'll take your entire fish. stock. And then, you know, inflate the stock market so that the fish stock is up. So then you can sell your fish for more. Wait, you're going to inflate the stork market? Is that what yeah. I heard? Pretty the much, yeah. Probably. Like, like storks? As in, like, the, the bird? Yeah, yeah, I assume so. Okay, yeah. okay. 
Yeah. I just want to clarify. All right. Uh, yeah, this game like looks like a piece of shit. Like for if you look at it for five seconds, but once you like play it for more than a minute, it's like, oh my god, this is like it's just like, yeah, like one of the most detailed, like thought out, like looks shooters, like, like it's an egg like, but it's not. Yeah, it, it's all it's all a ruse. <laughs> yeah, I'm still waiting for Vinny Vine Sauce to play this game. So do it one day. That sounds like something you would have played it long. I, I've, been, I've had my eye on this. I just didn't buy it because it just came out of early access, so I bought it when it came out. I, I've, I've had it in my wish list for like Actually, you know what? a while now. I wonder if he has. He might have. <laughs> but. I mean, I, even I, the I controls honestly... are like weird and up upsetting. Like, guess what the reload button is, Lucas? Take a guess. The back right trigger. Okay, close. It's the right mouse button. You hold down the right mouse button and move your mouse downward to reload your gun. What the heck? That is the <laughs> yeah, weirdest way. What, what the fuck? He played it six months ago. Oh. Oh, he probably played it when he was in early access. Yeah. He played it with like two other games. Okay. But like, yeah, yeah. Juice World. That's no wonder why I like looked at this game and thought of Juice World. Because when I first saw it, it was from Vinny like six months ago when he was playing it with Juice World and some other game. I think Juice World's more of a shit post than this. This game, I don't know. Juice World it... is like a very like deep RPG. <laughs> I haven't seen too much of Juice World. I only saw that when I was like an early alpha. Yeah. But yeah, check out Cruelty Squad. It's probably one of the best FPSs like in a while. Yeah, <laughs> actually, there's a lot of good indie FPSs that come out, but this is this yeah, is up there with like dust. Breaking in its boots. <laughs> yeah, what about... is that as good as that other game, Hyperkill? Oh, um, uh, Ultra Kill. Ultra Kill. That's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, Ultra Kill. Yeah, that's one of New Blood's first-person shooters. And New Blood makes some freaking good games like Dusk. Uh yeah. this is less of like Ultra Kill's games are more like. Doom or Quake like where it's like really fast paced like Bloodfest. Cruelty Squad mm -hmm. feels closer to feel like I don't know, like Deus Ex. Spec Ops it's... the line. Yeah. No, Spec Ops <laughs> Spec Ops is actually more of an action game, but yeah. <laughs> no, this is something like closer to like Deus Ex or like I don't know, like the Hitman gameplay. Like it's it's more like right. it's, it's got all this weird like... shit that shouldn't be there, but it is. Yeah, it's an immersive sim, like System Shock or Thief. Like, it's more like... Yeah. Yeah, it's less of, like, an action game and more, like, plonking you into a world and fucking around. <laughs> right. Which is something that's hard to do. Like, kudos to them for, like... It, it yeah. feels like a weird, bizarre hellscape. <laughs> it's definitely a Sunday stream masterpiece. Yes, it is S-tier. But, uh -huh. yeah. Check it out. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. Next is Chikori, A Call for Tale. Oh, this is my actual game of the year. <laughs> I haven't finished it yet, but this is, like, amazing. Uh, did I, do any of you remember this from uh, Summer Games Fest? It had, like, a trailer there. I know what it is, yeah. You play as, okay. like, a dog and you got a paintbrush and you paint the world. But I yeah, don't it's know pretty much a Zelda much. game, but you can paint everything. And okay. it's freaking amazing. Like... The writing starts out fun and quirky, but then it gets, you know, stupid emotional. It's like Undertale. It has that same kind of feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or it tricks you into thinking it's going to be quirky and funny, and then it makes you cry. And I haven't even finished it yet, because I've been taking my sweet time with it, because I know I, I, I don't, want it, don't want it to end. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and, yeah, it's just, the drawing mechanic is simple, but it's it's just fun like just to doodle it feels really satisfying just color and everything and there's a lot of fun mechanics that work its way into there like it's almost metroidvania e where you kind of just get abilities that let you explore more using your drawing like you get like one ability that lets you swim and paint like splatoon and stuff like that oh yeah or you get like light up paint so you can go through like caves like a lot of little stuff like that that's fun and uh the soundtrack is done by the Celeste composer. So it's, you know, 
mind-blowingly amazing, as you can assume. <laughs> good. Very, very good. Yeah, uh, I, I think this is a shoe for my game of the year. Honestly, I don't see anything topping it. It's just like... Wow. It's hard, it's, it's hard to sort of talk about, but it's just, it's great. It's the time to play it. It's very, it, looks, it looks very interesting. It, it's sort of like Zelda gameplay, but you doodle. Lots of doodling and drawing and painting. It's fun. Yeah. It, it, but yeah, it's 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 a simple. It's like it's a, it's like it's just a really simple concept that you think, oh, no one's ever done a game where you could just draw on everything. I don't think I've seen that really. Nah, man, yeah. you forgot Mario Paint. That shit was on like the Super Nintendo. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's a game where it's just you just draw. This is a game where it's like an actual adventure game that you could just doodle. Nah, man. Mario Paint was an adventure. If you think otherwise, you're just wrong. Adventure, <laughs> where you make uh, a bad animation of, like, yeah. Yoshi walking around or something. Yeah, you kill the flies. Yes. It came with a mouse. Oh my god. Oh yeah, this game actually plays okay on controller as well. I've been playing it on mouse, but they do have a lot of little touches to make it work well in controller. Also, this game has boss levels. I'll leave that to you to figure out how they work <laughs> in a game like this. A smiley face over their <laughs> frowny face. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Oh, but the boss levels are great because that's when you realize that, oh, this is the Celeste composer because then they get to do, like, techno music and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the music just starts going super hard. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, please buy it. Everybody listening to this, go buy it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. That is all. Game of the year. <laughs> <laughs> that is all. Game of the year. Uh, yeah, I don't know much else I can add to it. All right. Uh, I want to move ne on then. Next we got is sure. another topic uh, we talked about before. Mario Golf Super Rush. So... Lucas, you played a little bit of this. Yeah, right? so I pretty much... Everything I'm going to say is pretty much everything that everybody's been talking about with the game. And it's the fact that... Um, it, except except for the point of it that people didn't think it was worth all the hype. Which, what are they expecting from a sports game? Like a golfing game. Like people well, were... I mean, for the most part, I heard people who liked Mario Golf games in the past and were disappointed in this one. Um, well, I don't remember exactly what their disappointments were. They honestly. were the, the 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 big talk was the fact that there were only four like four main maps or ranges. That's bizarre for a golf game. Yeah, and then that it was. Well, I know they're adding more after launch. I know. From what, from my experience, it was a, it's a party game. Like it's a game you bring to a, a family member's house, or like you got all your cousins over or something, and you're playing for fun. Like, this isn't necessarily a game you're gonna be playing by yourself. Well, it, that's it, not true because there's a story mode, that single player only. Besides the story mode, but who plays the story mode in, in yeah, Mario? Yeah, this is the kind of game that's made as like a, a party game. Like no one, this isn't made. Well, I mean, Nintendo seems to be making it to be a single-player game, but that's, that's not the kind of game this is. Like, I don't know. Like, who played Mario 3 out of 3 hoops alone? I did. Did anyone? Are you crazy? Well, crazy? Who, who am I going to play with? I don't know. Your friends? That's like the point. Nah. You're, it's like playing Wii Sports alone. Actually, Wii Sports does have a single-player mode, and it's kind of weird, but... Well, well, Wii Sports and boxing. That was the only good single That's player true. one boxing you just had to mess up the bot oh my god that was he, give him the good <laughs> then old matt messes you up yeah matt yeah you but hit you get to yeah. matt and then he's just like yeah um i've won every single match before this one so i'm gonna knock you out yeah uh, yeah pretty much but yeah this having more focus on the single player is like that's fine having like a campaign that's fine but like having more focus on it in a game that's like clearly meant to be a like, this is the kind of game you play with Grandma. <laughs> it's like, oh, look, there's Mario. Here's a controller. Go hit a golf ball. Yes. I don't know. 
I don't really remember what uh, the Mario Golf fans' complaints were at overall. So, I'm, I'm not a Mario fan. Golf fan, so, you know. Being, like, imagine being a dedicated Mario Golf fan. Like, is that the, are those people real? They're real. All They're right. very I didn't even real. know. I didn't even know there was, like, a Mario Golf game on, like, GameCube, for example, until, like, a year ago. I didn't even know that There's, it existed. There's, like, a Mario Golf game in, like, almost every Nintendo game. I know! They're everywhere. Like, Golf is, like, the most prolific one. Yeah, it was one on NES. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, I, I I thought it was fun to play with friends. Um, nothing special, exactly what I was, I was expecting from the game. I definitely <laughs> think there was a lot of hype around it, but, and then people were just disappointed. But I don't understand why there was disappointment there because, why was there so much hype in the first place? But. Uh, I don't know if it was hype exactly, more just expecting slightly more from a $60 Nintendo release. I don't know if it's expecting slightly more, as it's just expecting it to be as good as the previous ones. And it didn't yeah. live up to the previous ones. And that I can understand. It's like, hey, this isn't as good as the old games. You know, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Is this no. as good as the PlayStation? What are that PlayStation Golf game from a billion years Everybody's ago? Everybody's Golf or something? Yeah. Cat's playable in that, so it's better automatically. But much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, if people are coming from the angle of it's just like, well, I played the previous games and they were way better than this one, then I can understand yeah. that because that's automatically like disappointing, effectively. Right. Yeah. Especially in the case of ones that, you know. There's when it comes to like Mario Golf or like Mario Kart or like Mario Party, there really isn't any reason to not just play the best one for the most part. Right. I've, I think for Kart, I think Kart, you could make a argument. I think I think Kart, they're all different enough. Yeah, but that's only because of the courses. Yeah. But it's like, why would you ever play one of the bad Mario Party games when you could instead play one of the good ones? Yeah. It's like, there's no reason to ever play, like, a bad Mario Party game. You know? Right. There's no excuse unless for it. <laughs> unless you really like some of the mini games. <laughs> yeah. But, um, for the sake of getting this along, since we don't have much to say about it, let's just move on. Yeah. Sure. We got The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Yeah, I've played this uh, up to the second case. I'm on the second case right now. Uh, not much to say that I... I mean, I, I had already played the first case, like, years ago on 3DS and the fan translation came out. I'm further than I had played back then. And all I have to say is uh, Herlock Sholmes is the most unhinged character I've ever met. He's fucking insane. That that, that That's that's all I can say about spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I could also probably say this is probably better than the other games after Apollo Justice. Like, Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice aren't bad Ace Attorney games, but they're not that good, and this is a lot better than those already. Right. Yeah, I like this direction for the series more. So it's an Ace Attorney game. You know what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah. Point at people. And I'm not far enough to say much more. I'm only, I'm only present in a second case. evidence. And yeah. then you win. And then you say objection then... a couple times. You say objection. Yeah. Take that. Hold it. This, ha this has a great... This has a dub, so you can hear him say objection in English if you'd like. <laughs> they added that. If you have a big objection to where I'm coming from, you could take that. Hold it and shove it up your butt. This is a very light spoiler, first case one. But in the beginning, he, does, he doesn't yell objection because you're lame in the beginning. He just he just yells yes for everything. But then you get cool throughout the trial. And he starts yelling objection and it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you start pointing. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. It's an Ace Attorney game. I forgot how fun these were. It's, geez, I can't remember the last time I played one. Ace Attorney 6 came out, that was the last time I finished one, I think, and that was... Damn, how old is Spirit Ninja? 
pretty old at this point. Fifteen-ish. It's old. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, go buy it. I'm glad Capcom finally translated this officially. And it's good translation. Lots of funny little jokes and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, move move on. on. Yeah. Sure. Not okay. much more I can say about it. Next we got game. Death's is Door. Death's Door. Yeah. We talked about this a bit last time. Have you got any further in it? Yes. I beat the final boss today. Oh, cool. Yeah. It was good. Um, overall, I really loved the game. I loved the aesthetic. I loved the gameplay. The level design was great. Uh, and after you beat the final boss, you actually unlock like a post game, which unlocks a bunch of other stuff you can do. You can like go back through the world where it's like nighttime and like some stuff is different. You can mm -hmm. find like secrets um, to unlock like another thing to unlock like a secret ending and stuff. Right. Interesting. So it was really good to buy Devolver by the guys who made Titan Souls, right? That one. Yes, which is a cool game, which I've been meaning to play for years. And I probably own a, like, Epic Games or something weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was really good. I really liked it. That's good. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Is it on your top ten games this year so far? Uh, this no? year? Oh, yeah. To be fair, have you played more than ten games this year? No. It's like I've only played like four or five. I mean, I played more than that. It's just like, you know, they didn't come out this year. Like I played yeah, through yeah. Metroid Fusion in preparation for Metroid Dread. But, you know, I, I, it didn't come out this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Same, same here. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Morph is fine. Good is good i like it's that good. how many hours did you put into it before you beat it oh yeah how long is it um i put like 10 hours into it all right okay. so, like, nice keep in mind one. that like after i beat it like what what happened was i beat it I, like the second i killed the final boss i had to go eat dinner like it was my dinner was fucking ready it came you know <laughs> <laughs> um and so i couldn't i couldn't actually sit and watch the credits I had to, like, kind of, like, you know, get my food and eat. <laughs> um, okay. and so I kind of just left it on for, like, the 20 to 30 minutes when I was eating. And then I played <laughs> it for, like, another 30 minutes after I beat the game, exploring the post-game stuff. So. Okay. A bit closer to nine hours. Okay. That's nice. I like that. That's a good, you know, like, t nine to 11 hours is, like, the perfect length, honestly, for most games. Yeah. Right. Unless it's the kind of game where you could, like, put in, like, a ton of time into, like, stat building or something. I'd like, I'd prefer games to be shorter on average. Yeah. I don't know. It depends. Yeah, yeah it really depends on the game. If it's a hour game, then I would expect at least, like, 15 hours. Yeah. To an extent. But, you know, nine hours, I think, is good enough. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I know definitely for sure there are games that the runtime is too long where it's like it goes on for 15 hours but it should have ended at like the four hour mark <laughs> right yeah i get what you're saying but i feel like death store um is really well paced mm -hmm. Good. Uh, it was really great i absolutely loved it awesome mm -hmm. um very yeah. zelda like I'd I'd love to see like a modern, top down Zelda that that would be like similar to this, in terms of like style and stuff. Well, yeah, like visual or gameplay style, or just in a general. bit of both. Like okay. what I really loved is like it's top down isometric, right? But it actually mm -hmm. utilizes the fact that it's three D a lot. Right. Where, okay. you know, you would jump from a higher ledge down, and oh, stuff. That's and it utilized that a lot, which is something that a lot of the 2D Zelda games utilize a little bit. Like, I remember Link to the Past does that a bit. 
and he a link between worlds does that a little bit as well but only really the same way a link to the it, past does it. it yeah link between worlds definitely had some dungeons that definitely had a lot of height stuff but yeah and i could see like a modern zelda game incorporating stuff they did similar to this a lot in that it would be yeah. really cool basically i want a new to top-down zelda game that isn't like you know a reimagining of a, a different Zelda game or a remake, you know? I want a new one. Yeah, or, or that weird thing that, what was that, like, fashion one with, like, three players in 3DS? Yeah. What was that? I well, that was that just, game. that was, like, a Four Swords game, but with three players, effectively. Yeah. That was weird. What was Top-Down Zelda? I, mean, like, I think about it, the last, like, real top-down AAA Zelda game was Link to the Past. Yeah, yeah. Because everything else has been on a handheld only. And the Switch <laughs> gave us, could have given us it, but instead they gave us um, a Link's Awakening remake. So. But at least we're doing, we're getting that for Metroid. Yeah. Check it. So, yeah. Uh, let's move on. Uh, I think this will probably be our last game. I don't think, I think we'll just keep it as a recap stream. Okay. Yeah, well. Yeah. Well, how about once we're done with this, we can just mention every single one instead of actually talking about them. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, our last game for recap stuff was the SMP3 Nocturne Remaster. Your mic's uh, really I'm the other... Yeah. Oh. oh, that's weird. Shimigami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster. Yeah. I have a lot of mic problems tonight. That's odd. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I played this. It still, uh, still sounds a little wonky. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Yeah, okay, you sound a little bit better now. That's weird. Oh. Okay. Alright. Anyway. Anyways, what were you saying? <laughs> uh, SMP3 Nocturne. It's a really good RPG. Uh, it's on F modern stuff now. There's some nice yeah. little quality life features. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, SMT. Yeah, Nocturne's great. Uh, it's like Persona, but mean. <laughs> um, I don't think what Kingdom I Hearts about it. Has screwed us again. <laughs> yes, look up that great clip. Damn, it's a shame we're not getting a Kingdom Hearts game this year, so that video could be relevant again. Right. Did, we, I, I, did we get that rhythm game, or was that last year? That was last year. That was last year. No. Yeah. Shame. They should have delayed it. Well, what about the PC ports of Kingdom Hearts? Did we get those last Ooh. year or this year? I think that might have been this year. I, th I think. Yeah, because I know they were on like, the Epic Games Store. <laughs> All right. What was that about? I don't know. But, um, PC ports. Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Nocturne's uh, great. It's amazing. The uh, atmosphere is weird and bizarre. Gameplay is spectacular. Building like, just combining demons and building like a super powerful party is really fun. <laughs> and demon negotiation is hilarious. Just you know, you just have a try and have a conversation with a demon, and they'll just say the stupidest shit and then murder you. Yeah, That's I do be like that. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, there are some weird issues like the Matador fight, like had like frame drops. Which is weird. Yeah, like there's like occasional like frame rate drops on a port of a PS2 game. It's, it's strange. Not not like it's not, it's not like a deal breaker. They don't like have it during gameplay that much, more like during cutscenes. But it's strange. I don't know. Maybe it'll get patched, but something to be aware of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Anything else you have to say on it? Uh, not too much. It's good. I'm making my way through it. Okay. <laughs> anyway. I'm just gonna lightning round through all releases this year. Uh, something like that. So I, I want to kind of like have a bit of a closing segment uh, to this since it was a long stream, and the you point are. of the stream was to catch up on all the releases um, this year, cover stuff that we talked about before in the past again, and get to talk about things that um we didn't get a chance to uh before and so 
But the real reason why I really wanted to do this is namely just because this year has been absolutely amazing in terms of games, I feel like. I can't remember the last time I've had this many great games to play. Like, I know I complained a, b a bit, you know, um, <laughs> especially during the Ratchet segment, but I do want to preface the fact that we got a new Ratchet and Clank game this year is still amazing. It's still pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, like, I just, like, you gotta realize when I complain about Ratchet and Clank, it's because I really, really, really love Ratchet and Clank. Right. <laughs> And so any little thing that's wrong is going to annoy the crap out of me because I expect perfection <laughs> from the series because I love it so much. You know, yeah. I want it to be the best it can possibly be at all times. And so I'm going to judge it highly because of that. But I still absolutely loved it. And I really want to emphasize that this year. It's only halfway through. And it has been amazing with how many great games we've gotten. And when you look ahead to the second half of this year, it gets even better. Yeah, like, that's like... the really crazy part about it. <laughs> like, this, is the, this is the crazy part. Because like, we got a little list here. We were going to talk about them, but it's been going on for two hours. And I don't think we'd have much to we're say about them anyway. on this list that you're most excited about. And we already talked about them all in the past. So let's just go through it. Like, to keep in mind, tomorrow, tomorrow we get Here Comes Nico. Which looks Being adorable. Published by yep. Gears to Bexus, the Hen Time guys. They're publishing it. It looks great. You know, and that comes out tomorrow. Like then late in the year we get like Fist, that Metroidvania, that's this PlayStation exclusive. It looks great. Another good Metroidvania. This year has been insane for Metroidvanias. Like Oh yeah. It. We're getting we we've already gotten Ender Lilies and that was fantastic. We're getting Metroid Dread. That's another game on the yeah. list. And we're getting Fist. Yeah. You know, right. Metroid Dread. We're getting Metroid fucking Dread this year. Yeah. We don't even have to go on. We can just say Metroid yeah. Dread. It's, yeah. It's oh a new my Metroid God. game. We're getting a new WarioWare game that looks great. Yeah. You know? I like the game. We're getting No More Heroes 3. No More Heroes no, fucking no. 3 we're getting. Yeah, that's shocking. We're Still. getting Shin Megami Tensei 5. Yeah, four's old now. Oh my God. It looks fantastic. It's blowing Pokemon out of the fucking water in terms of quality, as to be expected from competent game developers. I'm not gonna completely call Atlas competent. They can make some. They can do some goofy <laughs> shit, but still. <laughs> oh, they're better than Game Freak. Yes. Sir. They're mm -hmm. better than Game Freak. No, oh, getting back for blood. And we're getting like Deathloop and Oh Deathloop's gonna be so cool. Getting solar ash. Back for Back for Blood's gonna be so cool too. Yeah. That's gonna be like fun. Getting... Or at least... Yeah. There's so many amazing games coming out this Kenna? year. There's so many amazing games that have already come out this year. It's absolutely fantastic. It really yeah. is. Humankind. That's gonna be a good game, I can already tell. Yeah. Kenna. The only getting... the only game that we are not pumped for and we maybe <laughs> we'll have to shit on it some more in another stream <laughs> is the diamond and pearl remakes coming out oh, yeah. no. I, ha I have go easy on them here but i don't i don't think nah. we're, we're not going easy <laughs> on them. Nah. i added that <laughs> <laughs> they don't deserve mercy it's oh they get no sympathy from me. Yep. But let's not get caught up in that now. We can discuss nah. them when they actually come out. Yeah. More importantly, we're getting Solar Ash this year. A 3D yep. spiritual successor to Hyper Light Drifter. Like, come cool. on. This year's going to be look... amazing. It's been amazing. Yeah. At least for video yeah. games. It's definitely yeah. been better than last year. Last year was ass. I can't even think of a single good game that came out last year. At least none that I played. Ah, oh, fudge. Like, uh, Ghost of Tsushima came out last year. No, I haven't Ghost played it yet. Is, is good. Damn, I'm, I'm really... I'm, I'm trying to think. What did come out last year? The Last of Us Part Two came out last year. And Animal Crossing. So there's three games that came out last year. It was Animal Crossing, Last of Us Part Two, and Ghost of Tsushima. Guess which one won all of the awards? Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. 
No, it was no. Last of Us. It really? won every single award. What's it won almost like everything it was nominated for at Game Awards. It was crazy. Yeah. Out of like the 20 awards you could get, it got like 12. <laughs> yeah. Hades that... came out last year. Oh, yeah. Hades is good. I had, there was four games that came out last year. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a lot. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to the rest of this year. It's yeah, we we definitely need to expand sick. this list soon. Yeah. But. I don't know. Do we have any control over that? No, but we need to. <laughs> we we gotta um, hope. We gotta hope for new stuff. Well, no new games are gonna get announced for this year. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Anything you can happen. Know. Melee. No, literally, it's Super Smash like, Bros. Melee. They get a remaster. It, like, within the next two months, and it have to release in December. Yeah. Like nothing yeah. new is getting announced this year. Pretty, for the rest of the year, it's like. We're over halfway. But yeah, it doesn't even matter. We don't even need any new releases. This. Yeah. Yeah. We got Metroid Dread. We don't need anything else. Yeah. This year is going to be. The rest of this year is going to be good. Because the first half of this year has already been fantastic. I can't wait to play WarioWare. <laughs> <laughs> Get it together, WarioWare. Yeah. <laughs> all right let's wrap it up then yep all right thank you everybody for watching that ends this concludes our two hour and 15 minute podcast for today um thank wow, you for tuning in uh, make sure to follow us on twitter and youtube and make sure to drop us a follow here uh it means a lot to us we put a lot into these episodes and it would be greatly appreciated if you could just drop us a like and follow if you like what you're seeing and all the podcasts that we stream on here will be directly uploaded to YouTube as well as our Let's Play. And, yeah. Have a great night. Good night. Mm-hmm.